Welcome to Specific Lab. We have an inside dog that's getting a little bit older and finding it a little difficult to get around. So for this project, we built a raised dog food holder to make it a little bit easier for her to reach her balls. Let's begin. Now for this project, I'm gonna be using some pallet wood. I disassembled some pallets in a previous project and had some left over. So I'm gonna take this over to sander. I'm gonna sand these down. I'm gonna use an orbital sander as well. We're gonna try to get these nice as smooth as possible. And then we're gonna see if we can get them straight on the edges so we can glue them together. Now for this setup, I'm gonna try and do some oversized finger joints. We're gonna have the center real long and the two outer pieces a little bit shorter. And to do that, I gotta measure out the full width I need, which is about 22 and a half inches. And then I have to measure the thicknesses of the sideboards. And I need to come in just a little bit on these. Now I'm gonna cut down the middle board. Now I'm about to cut out the sideboards, and when you're dealing with pallet wood, you can have part of it 9 16 part of it half inch, and every other size in between. So I'm going to take the little bit larger size, and we're going to cut those down, and then we can always sand down the middle one to fit. Now I'm going to cut these sideboards with a slight inset. Now that I have everything cut to size, I'm going to flip them over onto my workbench. It'll be upside down. The top will be facing down because I know my workbench is flat and that should help all these be nice and level. Make sure you measure out both sides to get them as even as possible. You can mark them with a little pencil so you don't lose the place. And then we're just gonna add some glue. And make sure it stays flat. We need to add a little bit of weight. Now while this is drying, we can actually still work on the side, as long as everything stays nice and still. These outer pieces are going to be a little bit longer than the inner piece, and so to do that, I'm actually going to just line everything back up along the inner boards here. And that, being that these cuts should be even, when you go to lift this up, the offset there should be just about perfect. It could be slightly off, we can sand it down. Now, if you're doing dimensional lumber, which is already cut to size, this should be a real easy fit. But since I'm using pallet, of course, I'm probably gonna need some sanding. And of course, just do the same on the other side. All right, now that we've given everything a little bit of time to dry, we're gonna test fit these together. Again, we're using pallet wood, so it should go together, but doesn't mean it's gonna be a great fit. We're still gonna have to do a little bit of massaging to make sure everything is nice and level. And as you can see there, it does fit together. So before we go any further, I need to cut down the sides a little bit, so let's do that. Now to make sure both of these are the same height, I'm gonna cut them at the same time. So we're gonna have both faces go together. We're gonna have it nice and even. Now we're gonna place it on here and cut it right about seven inches. Now I wanna stain these so they kinda of have a contrasting look between the top and the sides, but before I do that, I need to go over it lightly with a sander to remove any of this dried glue. Now on these side pieces, I do wanna cut one additional piece out, it's just like a half circle, just to make this look a little bit better, also to have it less of a footprint so I don't have to worry about the floor being uneven. So I'm gonna take two of them, put them face to face, we're gonna then tape them together, and I'll probably use this large piece of tape here to draw out the half circle and then cut it out on a bandsaw. All right, there we have two sides, pretty much identical. Now that we have the sides to the height and shape we want, we need to cut out the circles for the bowls. Now the bowls I'm gonna be using are different sizes, so I'm gonna be coming in six and a half on this side, and five and a quarter on this side. And then of course, I need to find the center of this board. Now I'm gonna cut these circles out using the jigsaw, but first I need to drill a hole so I can get everything started. Now at this point, I'm actually gonna make a couple changes. 
first off, I had my wife look at this because this is definitely going in our house for our dog. And she decided instead of this side, she wanted me to actually invert the whole thing, flip it over, and to have it this as the top. That's a great thing about using the pallet wood in the fashion that we did, keeping everything in alignment. You can invert it and it doesn't look bad. Also, instead of having the two-tone, we went through a couple of different colors, a couple of different stains, and we decided we're gonna do this all one, just single stain. That'll keep this a little bit easier, especially since we have to do still do some sanding. Also, the stain that she's gonna choose is a weathered look. It's kind of a graying to your normal wood. So, let's do that. Now to give this whole setup a little more structural integrity, I'm gonna cut down a few more strips of pallet wood and we're gonna place them along the sides here. This will give a little more support to the top and the sides, so it's less likely for them to flex or give. It'll also be less likely for this center here to work. Now we're gonna rip this in half on the table saw. All right, now I'm gonna glue these in place. Now we're gonna glue the sides onto the top here. And to do that, I wanna put glue specifically in the areas of all contact. Now I gotta be careful because I have a lot of ingrain, so I have to put some glue on here. Give it just a moment as I'm doing it add an additional little piece because some of that glue is going to soak in and then we're going to join it all together. I'm adding a clamp here on the side. This doesn't necessarily have to be that tight. It's just trying to hold everything together so that we can get everything else aligned up. Now I'm going to use a brad nailer to speed up this process. If you don't have a brad nailer, you don't need it. Just make sure you have everything clamped together and give it plenty of time to dry. Now that we've given it some time to dry, I need to hand sand this. Use This is a regular sander. I may even use my orbital sander. We're gonna go over most of these rough edges and anything that's uneven, just so there's less likely a chance for our dog or ourselves to get any splinters. Now I'm gonna add some of the weatherwood stain on here and let's see how it looks. It's definitely turning everything just a, a faint gray look. Kind of like you would see if you left wood outside for a long time. And to add some additional protection across this wood, especially from the dog water, I'm gonna add some spar urethane. Now that we've given this some time to dry, it's ready for the first test. Oh yeah, I think that's gonna work out perfect. Now for some of you that like symmetry, I get the larger bowl here and the smaller bowl over here. Might drive you a little bit nuts, but our dog drinks a bunch of water, so we had to go for a larger bowl. In any case, I think this looks great. Tell me what you think. Antique looking. Old holder, blah, blah, blah. I don't know what I'm gonna say. Eh, 